Okay, we have a few minutes to speak amongst ourselves to engage with our last three speakers. Uh, the President, His Excellency, will need to leave very soon. And so we will speak for the next seven minutes. We had a pre-dialogue. Please, those who are willing to speak, get, grab a mic. Those who are close to the microphone, please make your way to the two microphones in the aisle. Otherwise, raise your hand and I'll identify you to speak from where you are. There is a hand in the audience there. I have some people moving towards the mic in the center. Please, we'll take as many as we can. I'll go three at a time and see if there's any possibility for quick responses. There's two mics, so two people can stand at the mic at the, towards the back of the aisle. Fantastic. So could we have the first intervention? Okay, hi, uh, President Bachelet, welcome. Um, I'm from, I'm, my, name, my name is Jabu, and I'm from an organization, Iranti Org. Um, I just have a short question for you, an advice question. Um, in June this year at the United Nations, Chile boldly voted against a normative definition of the family. And South Africa, the definition of family. And the fact that the UN women and the United Nations still want to push a, a very traditional definition of the family. What is it that we can do? And South Africa actually voted in favor of a traditional definition on the family. South Africa, with its progressive constitution, with its human rights mandate, voted in favor of this. Chile voted against. Thank you for voting against this definition. How is it that we can move ahead at a global level on changing what is becoming more and more traditional values and norms. So when we speak about the family, we really have to be cautious about this word because we have to keep explaining its diversity so that it doesn't reinforce a stereotype. How do we do that? Thank you for that question, fantastic. Let's move to, could we move to the person standing at the mic towards the end of the aisle, if you could go next. Yes, and then we'll come back to the mic in front. Um, go ahead. Um, good afternoon, Madame President Bachelet and all protocol observed. Um, I thought on the, on the theme of outrage, I would like to honor the Kulamani members who are present in this hall today. Kulamani, will you please stand up? Kulamani members. President Bachelet, um, you have, we have 85,000 members of Kulamani. Kulamani means to speak out. Most are women. All are survivors of gross human rights violations and torture. We are outraged that the South African government believes, as you said yesterday, that if people die, maybe the pain of the past will go with it. It won't. What is happening is the next generation are taking forward the struggles of their parents. This struggle for acknowledgement of the past will not go away if it's not, not properly reckoned with. In Chile, you had two TRCs. We've only had one very incomplete one. We need to learn from you. And just a little bit of hope some of the women are doing an Arplera workshop with a Chilean woman who is going to teach how to stitch our stories. And we hope to, to share our stories of apartheid with you because the women have showed, shared their stories of the dictatorship and disappearances that has inspired us. So I want to thank your people and thank you too. Thank you very much. Let's move forward to the front mic. Please go ahead. You have um, 60 seconds. I'm Andy Kawa yeah. from an organization called Kwanele Enough is Enough. Kwanele, yes. We say it is enough of silence. Mm. The silence that makes victims invisible. 
It is enough of fear, the fear that stigmatizes and the fear that makes people and families be silent about perpetrators around them. We say it is enough of apathy. It is time for South Africa to be outraged and take a stance against gender-based violence. We based our activities on a preface that was made in a book of UNESCO by Nelson Mandela, by the late Nelson Mandela. The things I will summarize what he said, the book was Broken Bones, Broken Bodies. It was a study of sexual violence throughout the country. He first mentioned that it is not enough to get the liberation of the country. We need to get the liberation of communities and individuals. In South Africa, because of crime and gender-based violence, we don't have that liberation of individuals. He said that safety and security needs public and private consensus. So we need to stand together as active citizens and fight against this, this violence. I think that we need a second wave of liberation against gender-based violence. I include men who are also violated. As Ilitela Bantu in its 25th year journey in the fight against violence on women and children, I'm not going to be taking time going that. We are on a journey of redefining what rape and sexual abuse is all about. We are saying let us all get together in the social outrage against putting more emphasis on the harm against the body which can be washed with water and soap, but look at other means of dealing with the ruptured souls of the people. By that, we want to put a challenge to all of us by saying, let us please uh, plead with the government to refrain from fragmentizing those services through selective funding, but look at, don't pitch each other against um, the ad activism, because activism have, have died. We need to say today and tomorrow, we need to look at programs that are going to be looking at removing the shackles of poverty that makes us victims rather than by, by social beings mm. that are responsible for their care. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think what we'll do is we'll take the last two uh, people lined up and just check in with our speakers for any quick response. Yes? So let's move to the mic uh, that's at the far end of the aisle, and then we'll come forward. Good morning to everyone. Um, when uh, Professor um, Bennett was saying, uh, explaining the story of her sister about um, those um, are and gender issues, and I was saying, I'm coming from the climate change uh, community, and we share lots of these frustrations, also where climate change is not an issue by itself, but it's about energy and mining and competitiveness and our consumption patterns, behaviors, etc. And um, so we felt um, um, that also um, we would like here to bring that it, it, um, we need to kind of also bring, uh, build bridges between the gender and the climate change issues. And um, so I'm part of a South-South collaboration where the government of Chile and South Africa are very engaged, also academics, UCT with the Universidad de Chile and Catolica, and we're exploring different development paths uh, to transition to a low-carbon economy, society that is equal and fair. And um, I think the MAP Chile team is, is doing a great job in having this conversation, but I think it's fair to say, and I would like to ask the colleagues in Chile, but that we like, uh, so MAP Chile like the South Africans are struggling to address the gender issues in there. And therefore, if I may, I, I had like two points for consideration for Her Excellency um, um, Michelle, Michelle. So um, there's an next opportunity now in the Ban Ki-moon uh, summit uh, uh, in few months time, and we're already doing some steps in um, making the sustainable development goals, talking to climate change goals. So um, maybe the children can also play a, a leadership role in that sense and, and making talk each other. And also maybe, um, considering um, um, how, how to um, 
continue these conversations, domestic conversations like MapChile, but also many other initiatives to have these um, um, conversations on what's the Chile we want and how does the Chile um, looks like and it should be this comprehensive approach where we all talk to each other, climate change, gender and other social equity like inequality, other issues. Um, so, yeah, Thank you thanks. very much. Thank you. <laughs> Let's have a last uh, 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 input. Hi, good day. My name is Danique Smith and I'm a 20 year old and I'm a, a victim of domestic violence. I'm currently residing at an NGO called the Sharki Batman Center for Abused Women and Children, which has been my home, my safe haven, and my place to heal for the first five months after I had the courage to leave. Um, I'm going to share a bit of my story to help you to understand how all our lives are affected by all the issues that you have mentioned today. I did not grow, out with, grow up with parents, right? So ultimately, I seek for love in a man, right? I stuck in that situation for seven years because I had no way out. I had nothing out, right? Um, I'm, I'm, I have matric, I did all the necessary things that I could have done. At the center, they empower us, we get computer courses, we do things to empower ourselves. But the reality of our situations is, where do we go from here, right? Um, I don't have money to go and study, but I'd love to study. Um, we don't have housing. Mm. We apply for jobs like crazy, but nothing comes our way. We are given the, the time to, um, you know, pick ourselves up, to do what we are able to do ourselves. But I mean, where do I go from here? The shelter helps a lot of people and we have a certain time frame. So after that time frame expires, where do I go? What do I do? And this is an issue that is affecting each and every woman sitting in our row because that's the reality of our situation. We have kids, you know, my kids are in foster care because I'm not able to to care for them, but yet I'm a woman standing who has been through how and who has the determination to make something of my life, to turn my life around. But where does the help come from? You know, as we've done what we could from outside. So um, all I can basically say is that as women who have been abused, we pray for a bright future that will, um, you know, that will help us forget the pain of the past, but an outreach needs to come into place. Thank, Thank you, you very much for sharing that. Very powerful input.